Hi, welcome to the EEV blog, an electronics engineering video blog of interest to anyone involved in electronics design. I'm your host, Dave Jones. Hi, now I was going to do an equipment review of this cute little XTEC RC200 tweezer type multimeter. Check it out, isn't it quite neat? I thought it was a really cool little gadget and how the tweezers disconnect like that and you get these standard probes which plug in like that and it's Cat3 input rated, fantastic I thought. Uh, I liked how it's got uh, auto scanning modes, it's got a neat capacitance range, the continuity tester worked really well. I was going to rave on about how it's got a nicely designed little uh, battery holder on the back and it comes with a soft case and I was really quite enjoying this little um, quite unusual multimeter and I was looking forward to doing a review of it this afternoon but I can't. Why? Because the piece of shit blew up in my hand! Ugh. That's right, the damn thing blew up in my hand when I was trying to measure 240 volt mains. I was holding it like this, probing the 240 volts as I do, BANG! The damn thing! It, it didn't literally blow apart but it was one hell of a bang and I jumped 10 feet across the room. The damn thing near killed me. So clearly, there goes the review because all I've got is a charred meter. I don't have another one to do a review. Not that I would anyway because this thing has a serious safety issue which needs to be addressed. And I think I know possibly why it blew up. So let's take a look at it. Now I actually felt quite safe probing the mains with this thing because, well, it's an X-Tech for a start, right? It's a big brand name. The probes are uh, Cat4 actually input rated. It's a Cat3 input rated meter to 600 volts. And take a look at the brochure for it. Here's a photo from the brochure where you can see somebody probing the mains with it. No problems at all. So you think this meter is perfectly capable of probing the mains. And I'm sure it is if it's used correctly. But if you use it incorrectly, and I think there might be a design, there's either a way to use it incorrectly or a design quirk in it that will make it blow up if you measure high voltages. It's crazy. Now, unfortunately, I don't have another one of these meters to do further tests, and it's a bit charred inside, which makes it a bit hard to trace out and things like that, exactly what's happening. So I'm going to have to rely on XTEC to do investigations and find out exactly what the cause is, but I think it's one of two possible reasons. Number one is that um, if it can't handle uh, 240 volts or you know high voltages on the uh, on the resistance the capacitance or the diode or continuity range then well that's just rooted really that means that the product shouldn't even be on the market if it can't do that especially one that shows people probing the 240 volts mains and especially one that only has a single mode switch like that because, you know, it's understandable if you've got a big range switch like that and you turn it around to current mode or something like that and it shorts out the mains, well, you know, you're just an idiot for, you know, switching it into current mode or something. But this thing should be able to handle 240 volts on all of the ranges, considering it has no current ranges at all. And if it can't do that, it's screwed. So I'm not sure if that was the problem, because in the manual, it does actually state that you should switch it to 240 uh, and you should switch it to uh, voltage measurement mode before you do the actual measurements and um, well I didn't do that I had it on auto scan mode and hey <laughs> you know silly me duh right auto scan mode you would think would be able to handle you know voltages on there because if you accidentally press that mode button you don't want the thing blowing up in your hand that's ridiculous expect a lot better from a professional meter. And granted, I didn't read the manual beforehand, and here it is, I'll put it up. This is what it says on the first page, uh, number five down here, a tiny little number five, never connect the meter leads across a voltage source while the function switch is in the capacitance, resistance, or diode mode. Doing so can damage the meter. Okay, fair enough, I didn't read the manual, you think. Right, well, if this thing can't handle 240 volts on the ohms range, then it's a piece of shit and it shouldn't be on the market. Really, especially when you can simply accidentally press the mode switch and put it into 
auto scan diode capacitance uh, diode capacitance resistance mode something like that if you're if you, even if you've got it set to the correct voltage mode like it says in the manual and you put it in voltage mode and you plug in the probes and you stick it into the 240 volt mains if you accidentally press that button it'll blow up on you and well that's one of the modes I don't know if that's the mode for sure but if it does that then that's a serious design issue and it's screwed right there now if it's not that issue I reckon it's this one plugging the probes into the unit like this okay I plug mine in like that you see the gap there right it requires a lot of force I'm putting a lot of force in there to to force that together completely okay and it takes a lot of uh, force to take it apart so when I think when I was doing my mains measurement it wasn't plugged all the way in like that it was you know it was plugged sort of most of the way until you know it was a good solid connection like that but let's take a look inside and see if there's a problem there I think there is now this is actually quite a nice design aspect there's a little switch here see this black thing here okay it's actually got a little lever on it like that which is you probably can't see it but it's down in there so when you actually plug in these um, tweezer probes okay they only go in one way because they're keyed like that and there's a little curved thing over there it's a really nice really nice design okay you plug that in and that switch does not move at all okay now if you get the probes like this okay you plug the probes in um, I think it goes in that way yes it does okay plus and plus oh, there it is right plus and plus it's a really nice actual design and once again um, it's actually um, got a, a curved thing in there which matches up to there it's a keyed base thing but what watch this right when you plug it in okay now that's where I plugged it in when I think I did the test okay and that switch didn't move but if we plug it in all the way see that switch that that plunger just came out and moved that switch now I think that's what the issue is it's a really nice design aspect and that switches the meter I think into um, into voltage um, mode and it's supposed to be fully protected and it should handle 240 volts but because I only plugged it in part of the way like that um, the contacts engaged inside before the switch turned over like that so they've actually got that design completely and utterly back to front it should be um, so that when you plug in these tweezers uh, it pushes that switch out and when you plug in these it defaults to the fully protected voltage mode but I don't think it does so I think that's what the issue there I'm not a hundred percent sure I'm still relying on X tech to do some evaluation and actually tell me that but I think there's a serious design flaw that's back to front that makes this meter dangerous to use what a piece of shit okay now if you're actually curious to see what damage was actually done there's a there's a capacitor down there which is uh, blown there's a few passive components around here which uh, which are blown and nothing else on the top they've got a uh, PTC um, there and they've got a couple of mobs as well and but they didn't actually blow but this input resistor here is a bit um, char there's some charring on there but the real issue is if you flip it over like this bingo look at the soft rubber switch look at all the charring on that rubber switch there unbelievable and the bottom side of the um, of the rubber switch contacts it's all charred completely around there so imagine if you had that thing plugged in and you had your fingers on those buttons god it could have, you know the explosion could escape out through the buttons and ah oh, it's crazy and also the um, the chip has a really nice um, hole blown in it there now to back up that theory here's a data sheet for the uh, Cirrus Tech ES51928 chip which is used in this actual meter okay here's their example circuit this is not the circuit which is in the XTech RC200 okay this is just the example circuit from Cirrus Tech but I believe it's going to be very similar now you can see switch uh, 7 there the RCD continuity switch and that one is the one I believe is that is that keyed uh, engagement 
switch when you plug the probes in. When you plug the voltage probes in, it disconnects that switch and sends the voltage from the input through to through the uh, 10 meg resistor into the VR1 input of the chip and it should handle that and it should be fully protected and there's um, overload there's the input um, PTC and MOV protection devices there as well um, which aren't shown on here but that's what should actually uh, protect the meter but what happened is because we plugged in the probes and that switch didn't engage the 240 volts we were measuring went through that variable uh, pot there and went through the PTC on board and a couple of those passive parts and those passive parts are the ones that you see blowing up on the top side of the board. So I think that's pretty good confirmation that that's what the actual problem was. So there you go, that's not entirely conclusive, but I reckon that's what the problem was. I just didn't plug these probes all the way in. And there's nothing in the manual to tell you that you should actually do that. And even if you do, and they put warnings all through the manual, it's still a bad design and they've got it back to front and it's dangerous. And I don't think the damn thing, quite frankly, should be on the market. So it was a good design concept, but I think it was just poorly and dangerously, in this case, implemented. And uh, X-Tech have got a lot of explaining to do, and they need to fix it. And if you've got one of these X-Tech um, RC200s, I highly recommend you don't use it to measure voltage. Just use the tweezer thing just to measure passive components until X-Tech get back to us, because I'm sure they will. They're very responsive. They seem very keen to fix um, issues in their meters. So I'm sure they will get back to us quick smart with what the real problem actually is. I've guessed at it. Let's see if I'm right. And um, let's see if X-Tech can fix it. But until then, don't use this thing. And you know, it's a real shame because I was actually starting to like this thing until it tried to kill me. So my verdict on the X-Tech RC200 meter, even though this wasn't a review because it was just a charred mess, well, you guessed it! Bloody! Trying to kill me!